Hi, thanks for watching BibleMountain.com. In this video, we're going to read from Exodus 21 and learn that criminals should be punished. Over the past several decades, our criminal justice system has become more and more lenient with criminals. We've increased the excuses we make for people who commit crimes, and we have decreased the punishment for convicts. Exodus 21 illustrates that the God of the Bible has always valued justice and punishment. For example, when Yahweh brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he took them to Mount Sinai and instituted a criminal justice system. And this system included some very clear rules and also some punishments and sometimes some very harsh punishments. We're also going to look at Romans 13.4, which tells us that in our society, part of the rule of government is to be an avenger, a minister of God who brings wrath on those who do evil. And so the lesson to us from this is that in our society, criminals should be punished for their crime. So let's get started reading chapter 21. The context of this is that God has brought the Israelites out of Egypt. The Israelites had been in Egypt for several centuries. They had adopted the Egyptian culture. So when God brought them out of Egypt, he took them to Mount Sinai to give them their own culture. In the verses we're going to read today, he's giving them a criminal justice system. So let's get started at verse 12. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. Now notice the words put to death. In this case, the punishment for this particular crime was death. Verse 13. But if he did not lie in wait for him, but God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint you a place to which he may flee. If, however, a man acts presumptuously toward his neighbor so as to kill him craftily, you are to take him even from my altar that he may die. He who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Here's another crime where the punishment was death. Verse 16. He who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him or he is found in his possession, shall surely be put to death. He who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. If men have a quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist, then he does not die but remains in bed. If he gets up and walks around outside on his staff, then he who struck him shall go unpunished. He shall only pay for his loss of time and shall take care of him until he is completely healed. Now notice these words. In this case, the punishment was to pay for the man's loss of time. Verse 20. If a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken, for he is his property. In this case, a punishment was called for, but the exact punishment was not specified. Verse 22. If men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely, yet there is no injury, he shall surely be fined as the woman's husband may demand of him, and he shall pay as the judges decide. In this case, the punishment was a fine. Verse 23. But if there is any further injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. Now these words are very well known from the Old Testament. Life for life, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. This was the overarching philosophy of the criminal justice system in the Old Testament. Let's continue with verse 26. If a man strikes the eye of his male or female slave and destroys it, he shall let him go free on account of his eye. And if he knocks out a tooth of his male or female slave, he shall let him go free on account of his tooth. So again, God is giving the Israelites a criminal justice system, and we see that God valued justice and punishment. Now let's look at some verses in Romans chapter 13, and these are verses that give us instruction for our society and tells us the rule of government in our society in regards to crime and punishment. Verse 3, For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Then do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For government is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For government does not bear the sword for nothing. For government is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Now notice this last phrase, government is an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. This states very clearly to us the part of the role of government in our society is to avenge crime and bring wrath on those who commit crime. 
So again, over the past several decades, our criminal justice system has become more and more lenient with criminals, but we see in Exodus 21 an illustration that the God of the Bible has always valued justice and punishment. And we saw as an example that when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he gave them a criminal justice system that included some very clear rules and some harsh punishments. And then we looked at Romans 13, which tells us that in our society, the governing authorities are ministers of God, and part of their role is to bring wrath on those who do evil. And that teaches us that in our society, convicted criminals should be punished for their crimes. If you haven't already joined my email list, please do so. First of all, it is free. Second, by joining my email list, you will get my videos as soon as they are released. They'll be delivered right to your email inbox. This is the best way to make sure you don't miss out on any of my free content. In order to sign up, go to BibleMountain.com, click on Follow, and there will be a place there for you to enter your email address. And once again, thank you for watching BibleMountain.com.